Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one part of a series of videos introducing biology, the study of life. This video provided an overview of how to properly write a scientific lab report. Communication of results so that one's peers may evaluate your results and procedure is a very important aspect of science. For this reason, it's important to clearly and concisely represent your idea, procedure, and conclusions. The graphic on the top of this slide shows the typical components of a lab report and their typical lengths in pages. Key components would include your purpose, prior research, expectations, lab procedures, data in the forms of tables and graphics, and a summary of results. For all the lab reports that you will write this year, there are six components that you need to complete. These six components are number one, an overview of your experiment, two, an introduction to your experiment, three, a list of materials required for your experiment, four, a scientific procedure to follow, five, your data, tables, and uh, graphics, and number six, a conclusion. The first four of these six different components should be completed prior to conducting an experiment, as they will help outline how and why the lab will be conducted specifically. By completing these steps in advance, you can be more organized and therefore more efficient, comfortable and safe while conducting the lab itself. Each of the six components in the lab report will be described in the upcoming slides. The first component of the lab report, Roman numeral number one, is merely an overview of what you intend to do in your experiment. It is more or less a snapshot or a synopsis of the lab. I will often ask you to submit an overview of your experiment that you intend to conduct before going any further. With just this little bit of information, easily readable in about 30 seconds, I can make sure that what you intend to do is safe, relevant, and doable within our classroom. There is a separate video on experimental design that elaborates upon the vocabulary found on this slide, uh, but a very brief definition and form for the terms is provided here. After completing and seeking approval for an overview of the lab, the introduction comes next. In this portion of the lab report, you provide a background for the research that's been conducted before in this field, what you expect to find, and why you think you'll find the results that you do. While the introductory slide suggested that this should be around 10 pages in length, a couple paragraphs for our purposes will suffice. Unlike many other components of the lab report, this section must be written in paragraph form. The third component of the pre-lab is the list of materials. This is certainly the shortest section of the lab report and should include any specific items that you would require to conduct your lab. This will help you and your lab partners prepare in advance so that you don't need to waste class time looking for a hot plate, a 250 milliliter flask, or stuff that we don't even have available in our classroom. Roman numeral four is the procedure, and this is the final component of the lab report that should be completed prior to beginning the experiment itself. Your procedure should be written in bullet or number format. It should be very clearly and concisely written and full of specifics. Anyone in the world should be able to pick up your lab report to see what you did and to repeat it almost the same way that you did. The data section of the lab report, Roman numeral number five, should be produced during and after the experiment. There are two required components for the data section of your lab report. First, you need at least one data table to record data during your experimentation. Finally, when you finish collecting data after the experiment's finished, you need to produce an appropriate graphic to exhibit your data visually. There is a separate video that outlines different type of graphs and their proper form. The final component of your lab report is the conclusion. As the introduction, this should be written in proper paragraph form. This can be a rather sizable component of your lab report, and it needs to address five different points described in the section above. The first thing that you must do is explain what the data means. In essence, what you need to do is summarize in words what your graph shows. Second, you need to explain why whatever happened happened, in your opinion. Third, you need to describe any sources of error from your experiment. No matter how carefully you conduct your experiment, there will always be some potential sources of error or bias. You don't need to redo your experiment because of these sources of error. You just need to acknowledge them. Fourth, and this may go along with the previous section on sources of error, you need to describe any changes that you would make to improve the lab. Were you to do it again? Finally, fifth, most learning does a better job of creating questions than answering questions. If you were to conduct more research related to what you completed for this experiment, in what direction would you be interested in going? 
that pretty much sums up what you need to include in your lab report itself. One thing that's worth noting though is that when you conduct your research and you write up a lab report, the more data you have, the better. For a classroom research that I conducted for my master's degree in education, I vividly recall my professor suggesting that my sample size for collecting data uh, was in excess of 500 different data points. By collecting lots and lots of data, you can reduce the effect of chance, random luck, on your experimentation. For research that you conduct during this class, you should have at least 30 trials per experimental group. That is the end of this video summarizing key components of a lab report. If you're interested in learning about any specific biology concepts, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.